Great separation is a term I have frequently used over the years, especially when talking about railways or playing games such as Transport Fever. But it's not something I've ever taken the time to explain. So that's what I thought I'd attempt to do in this video. But before we explore the different types of grade separated junctions and their benefits, it's perhaps important to understand what at grade means. At grade typically refers to crossings which are at the same level, be it a pedestrian crossing such as a zebra crossing or where two roads intersect such as a crossroads or roundabout. The term at grade also applies to where two rail lines intersect or level crossings where a road crosses a railway. At grade crossings are everywhere and typically don't pose a serious issue for the flow of traffic, be it road or rail. But the conflicting movement of people, vehicles or trains can start to become an issue the busier a route gets. And clearly barrow crossings or level foot crossings over railways can pose significant safety risks. The solution to these conflicting movements is to separate the traffic flows by changing the grade or elevation. The simplest way to do this is to build a bridge, be it a road over road bridge, road over rail bridge or rail over road bridge, or even a pedestrian footbridge. They're all examples of grade separation. Separating pedestrian, road vehicles and rail traffic is relatively simple, although it can be costly given the large amount of earthworks and scale of the structures usually required. Even building a modest pedestrian over or underpass would have to come with significant safety and traffic flow benefits in order to be justified. In terms of roads, one of the most visible examples of grade separation are roundabout interchanges. These are normally found on motorways, but are also used on busy A roads such as the A55, A34 Newbury Bypass and A45 Coventry Road, to name just a few examples. In order for a road to be considered a motorway, however, it must be free flowing throughout its length. Therefore, grade separation is a must, with roundabout interchanges acting as feeders, connecting local traffic with the motorway, without interrupting the flow of the motorway. At least, that's the theory. Other examples of grade separated junctions include, but are not limited to, stack, cloverleaf, triangle and trumpet which all serve the same purpose, to separate conflicting flows of traffic and merging together flows from other motorways or main roads. My favourite type of grade separation, however, involves removing conflicts from railways, using a junction which is more commonly referred to as a flying junction. Grade separation can take the form of simply removing flat crossings and level crossings, However, a flying junction is a particular type of grade separated railway junction which aims to improve the flow of rail traffic by removing conflicts where two railway lines meet. The biggest drawback of these types of junctions is that they are costly to construct and today can cost anywhere from £250 million to £1 billion to build. So such junctions are usually only used on busy main lines. Although there are examples of underground grade separated junctions on the London Underground and even on the Merseyrail network just before Hamilton Square on the Wirral line. The most recent examples of grade separated junctions are Warrington Dive Under just north of Peterborough on the East Coast Main Line and Norton Bridge to the north of Stafford. The main construction methods usually involve building a bridge or flyover which removes a conflicting line and carries it above the main line. So for example, where two lines merge, the up or down line may be taken over or under the main line in order to remove a conflicting train movement. Most recently however, Network Rail has chosen to build concrete box structures such as the one used at Warrington, or the recent rebuild of Bletchley Flyover, which replaced a multi-span bridge with a huge concrete box. Box structures are much bigger and arguably less elegant than single-span bridge structures, but in most cases they are easier to construct and can be constructed with less disruption to the railway. Bletchley Flyover, for example, was rebuilt with a new box structure, instead of a new flyover, which meant the West Coast Main Line could remain open during construction. 
Network Rail said this approach saved £70 million versus building a new bridge, which would have required the construction of supporting columns in between the tracks on the West Coast Main Line. Be it road, rail or even waterways, and regardless of the construction method, typically when you remove conflicting vehicle movements by changing the grade or elevation, then that is what is considered grade separation. So hopefully this brief explanation gives you a better understanding of grade separation. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos.